My father is a cardiac surgeon. My entire life, he's pushed me down a path I don't want to go. I have top grades, so he's just assuming that I'm going to follow his path and go to medical school. He said he's going to pay for everything, and he will be extremely disappointed if I don't go. So when I decide to tell him, Dad, I'm not going. I'm in love with art. I'm going to art school. I've already been accepted. Well, I was not ready for his response. Hey, I've seen people tell stories about how they have decisions to make about their families and how they've had bad situations that they need to try to work out. It amazes me how, in some cases, people are so worried about losing their families that they give in and do whatever it is in their parents or other family members want them to do. I love the stories where people get to the end of their narrative and say that they're told their families to take a hike, never to speak to them again going no contact. Especially when it's those most toxic situations. You know what I'm talking about if you've been around long enough. Well, reading these things is like my guilty pleasure, and I always try to comment and to give people reassurance and hope. You see, my story could easily be one of them. And I realize as I've read yet another story of a person whose parents have brought them into the world just to be a pawn in their own lives that I've been there and come out of the other side too. Maybe I could tell my story and it would help someone. I'm not trying to make myself out to be some expert on this. And I've made mistakes in my life, but when it comes to crappy parents, mine are pretty high on the scale of bad parents. Most of the story happened when I was at school. But there have been some things recently that have brought back what happened when I was younger. We'll start back when I was a teenager at work and forward from there. I was born into a pretty well-off family and I'm the oldest of two kids. My dad, Nathan, is a cardiac surgeon and I assume by the amount he gets paid, a good one. I mean, he certainly tells everyone who will listen how good he is. My mother is Ether, 55 female, is a stay-at-home mother and is always shopping, hanging out with other doctor wives, or day drinking by the pool. I guess living with my dad could drive a person to day drinking, huh? Well, my sister Bella was a daddy's little princess type, whom he showed off to his friends in a way that was, looked back, creepy. Our whole life, growing up, we were told that we were only as good as the education we achieved. My dad said that the reason that people work in service or trade jobs was because their brains could not handle anything more complicated. And so they were, in his opinion, lesser than those of us who could get educations and become high-ranking members of society. I've sat through times where I wanted the floor to open up and swallow me whole. When my dad was berating some poor teenage waitress about how stupid they were because they've made a small mistake with his high dining experience, my sister and I were absolutely pushed constantly to achieve. And God help us if we came home with a report card that was not acceptable to dad. My mom did not care less unless it affected her. She was never hands-on parents and we were more like pets to her that she wanted at the time, but left to others just to deal with. We have private tutors and nannies growing up who were kinder to us than our actual parents, one of which played a massive role in who I am today. When I was in the last years of my school career, I was primed for medical school, which is the last place on earth I wanted to go. I am apparently an intelligent person and my grades were good, and I was guaranteed a place at university. However, I did not want it. I'm also very artistic. And one of the only things that got me through the stress of my teenage years was drawing and painting. I spent hours watching art videos on YouTube, reading up on art history, and practicing my own skill. My father was not exactly supportive and just called it a waste of my talent. One evening, when I was especially tired and fed up with studying, I told my dad that I did not want to go to med school because that was his dream, not mine. I wanted to go to art college and study art history and work on my own art. My dad said that would not be happening and that I need to stop thinking like a loser. As I said, there was a person who helped me to take the decision that changed my life. 
His name was Harley Jenkins. And old Harley was brought in to tutor me in mathematics and science. Harley was also a fan of art, and when we had a chance, we would discuss our favorite artists and styles of artwork. If my dad had ever heard us, he would have fired Harley without a thought to how unfair that would be. In my dad's eyes, Harley was there to serve us and get me ready for med school. My relationship with my dad suffered a lot during my last years at high school as I became more and more sure that medical school was simply not for me. I was sure that I would be miserable if I followed that route, and why should I spend the rest of my life living in my dad's shadow? I wanted to forge my own path and see where it took me. When I was complaining one evening at my study session with Harley, he said something that absolutely stuck into my head. I was saying that I didn't want to go to med school, and Harley simply said, Yeah, well, don't go then. I never considered that just not going might be an option. You never said no to my father. He would not allow me to do such a thing, except follow the plan that he had for me. I made the grade, so med school was where I'm going. But what if I didn't make the grades? The thought popped into my head and would not fade. For weeks, I thought to myself over and over again, if I fail, I won't be able to go. No medical school would accept a student who would not even pass high school. I knew it would bring the wrath of my father down upon me, but maybe it was the only way I could convince him to let me live my own life. So, that's what I did. I began to fail, on purpose. It started small with a few tests that I messed up, and although my dad was annoyed, he put it down to me being tired or not paying attention, and he did not say much. Until it kept happening and the essays I did were being returned with barely even a passing mark. I was careful not to fail completely as I still needed a good enough high school mark to do something. But not good enough for my med school. My dad got angry as the bad grades kept coming in and everything except art. I needed a good art grade. He blamed every one of my grades including Harley which made me feel bad. But Harley pointed out that it was his fault Bella would be failing as well, and she was hitting top marks also. I think Harley knew what I was doing from the beginning, and he never said a word. My dad tried everything to get me to sort myself out. He took away my phone, my game consoles, my books, my art supplies, but nothing helped as my grades just kept dropping. The teachers at school started to wonder if I was ill or if I had problems at home. Well, I did, but we did not discuss our private life outside the house, and suggested my dad takes me to a doctor for therapy. Of course, that would mean admitting one of his kids was faulty, so he was never going to let that happen. Finally, the main exams came around and I flunked them with passing colors. <laughs> it's nothing hard to do if you just answer enough to scrape a pass and then sit there and do nothing except yawn. I knew I had failed to get the grades I needed for university before I even left the exam room, but my dad lived in hope that I have sorted myself out. When the results came, he was apocalyptic with rage. How could I let him down? How could I be so darn stupid as to fail the exams I needed? Apparently saying, whoopsie, was not the answer he wanted. And for the first time in my life, my dad actually hit me. I full-on mean it, a slap across the face. Any respect I may have had for him ended there as I saw that my only worth to him as a son was at how well I did. He yelled at me for hours and then said I would be resetting the exams as soon as possible and he would talk to the university's ASAP. What happened next was so quick it took me a while to process. I said I would not be doing exams again. I had applied to and been accepted to art school, and that's where I was going. And then he said these words I couldn't believe over my dead body. Well, and before the night was over, I was homeless and cut off from my family. Bear in mind, I was still only 18 years of age, and my dad threw me out with no care to where I went, homeless on the streets. 
I went to stay with Harley and his partner who supported me over the next few weeks as I tried to work out what to do. My dad refused to talk to me. And he stopped my access to the phone, my bank account, and anything that linked me to the family. If Harley and his partner had not stepped up, I don't know what I would have done. Over the next few years, Harley became a father figure to me, and for that I will be forever grateful. Despite everything I've been raised to think, I decided to apply for art school and follow the path. It was not as easy as I had no backing from family, and it meant I had to apply for loans and grants and do everything on my own. If I've gone to medical school, my father would have made sure I was accepted to the best of the schoolings, but I was on my own. Luckily, I had managed to grab my portfolio from my house, and I let my work speak for me. Within moments, my life changed when I was thrown out of my family, and it would never be the same again. I know that there are people who are going through this every day, and some are not as lucky as me to find people who are offering you a home. But I know it's hard. Did things work out for me? Well, that's a story for another day. I have to work, but I'll update the next stage of my life pretty soon. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. This story has a few updates. Update number one did not come out for quite some time, but it was finally released. Let's jump into update number one. If you're not subscribed to the channel, take a second right now and click that subscribe button. And here's the first update of the day. So, here's how my life went on for anyone still following. I've read your comments. I have to say the number of messages I've received is absolutely overwhelming. And if you've messaged me and I haven't replied, please bear with me as I'm trying to make sure I reply to everybody. The most popular question I've been asked is, did it work out for you? Did you go home? Do you have a relationship with your father? I thought that instead of answering those one by one, I would just ask to carry on a reading as all this is part of the story. But I don't want to rush into those because after speaking with Harley and my partner, we realized that this story is actually pretty juicy and you might enjoy how things have turned out. Recently, something's happened which was not part of the story when I began to write it, so now I can tell you a story that ranges from betrayal to the ultimate revenge. So please, sit back, buckle in, boys, because this is gonna get good. Okay, so let's go on in order and start with art school. I managed to get the funding for it and tried not to think about the huge amount of debt I was signing myself up for. I've never had to think about money before when I lived at home as we were well off. And if I've gone to medical school, it would have been covered by dad. The school I chose was in the same city where I lived and hardly insisted that I stayed with them to help cut down the cost and I was so grateful for that. My dad had contacted me a couple times since I left to ask me if I'd come to my senses and if I was ready to admit I was wrong and reset my exams. I told him there's no chance and that I've been accepted into art school. He told me I was a disgrace who would end up living in poverty and nobody would ever respect me. Yeah, words from my father. That was the last conversation I had with my dad. I tried to contact my sister because despite everything, we'd always been close. But she told me dad had told her not to reply to any messages or she would be cut off too. That upset me more than anything else had ever done, and I told her I loved her and that I would be here when she was able to be free of his influence. I tried to push it away, but as time, it came back and I was devastated all over again. However, art school was everything I hoped it would be. I flourished and was able to develop my own identity that was not based on what my family did. I went out of my way to not tell anyone about my real family, and as far as anyone knew, I was the adoptive child of some really cool gay parents, <laughs> who my friends loved. It was through Harley and his partner that I met the guy I would eventually fall in love with and spend my life with. I had no idea I was gay, and just thought I was too busy for a girlfriend until I set eyes on Jackson and realize I just did not find girls attractive when I met Jackson. My dad would have blamed Harley for this as he did not believe that being gay was natural, and it was a learned behavior in his eyes. 
Jackson and I got together on my 21st birthday, and we've been together ever since. He's my muse in many ways. Anyways, enough gushing. <laughs> I worked really hard at art school and developed my techniques and skills. At the back of my mind, though, I kept hearing in my mind my dad saying that art was never going to take me anywhere. I would end up living in a hovel somewhere. Begging for loose change, and I could not shake that from my brain as it takes a lot of work to get noticed or, in my case, a sheer case of good luck. At school, we had to do a show towards the end of the course, and all our work was for sale. Our grades weren't affected by our sales, but it was aimed at giving us an idea of whether or not our work would be commercial. Unlike a lot of my course mates, I didn't want to design logos or business advertisements. I wanted to be known as an artist, with a gallery and patrons. I know, I was aiming high, and it was just a dream. It was just a dream until that show. We were allowed to choose four pieces of art to show, and our tutors helped us price them. They were not sold at high prices, as we were unknown at that point. The people invited to the show were also potential employers, who were looking for redesigners and artistic directors, and people to do their advertising. You could see that in the pictures my friend chose, they were aiming for employment. I didn't want that and went for art that showed my skills. You know how I said Jackson was my muse? Well, one of my paintings was of him. It was a semi-nude, would strategically place bedsheets because I wanted to show that they were beautiful. Well, there certainly is beautifulness in male form, which is often overlooked. I was nervous about that one, as it might be pushing the boundaries. Jackson, he approved. We were not dating at this point, but he had jokingly said that if I sold it, I owed him a date. Well, I did sell it. I sold it, Jackson. And that's how we ended up on a date for my 21st. Now for the surprise of the evening. I sold all four paintings to the same buyer. I didn't know until after the show it was a blur of talking to people, explaining my art, and justifying why I didn't want to do modern art. My tutor pulled me aside at the end to tell me, and, well, I had sold all four, but not at the price the schools had suggested. That one night, I made six times the amount of anyone else, and I found a sponsor. I was on a high, and for the next five years, my sponsor, who I promise not to name, paid for a place for me to work. A small gallery, and brought his friends to see my work. All he asked was, at first, our refusal on my work and a personal portrait of his wife. Which was a bit weird, as he wanted it in the same theme as the one that I did of Jackson. <laughs> He's still one of my biggest supporters. But I'm not independent and don't rely on him as a patron anymore. At the age of 23, I was in a serious relationship and working in my own gallery, and I guess you could say life was good. I was so happy in living my best life until life decided it wanted to give me a reality check and remind me that in the background, I had a father who absolutely hated my guts. So, I'll leave this at a high point and open another update to tell you how my life absolutely fell to shambles. Update number two. Final update of the story. Well, I guess you could say my life was going amazingly, as I said, and I had some questions asking me if I was trying to rub it in, that I did so well when people in my position, well, they've given up on life. It was not all roses, though, let me tell ya. On my 24th birthday, my life fell apart in many ways. I had a message from my father saying he wants to talk. I didn't want to go and was ready to delete it, but Harley and Jackson both said I should hear what he had to say. So, I went. I went to meet him and made Jackson come with me for support. My father, because he is a pretentious a-hole, picked the most expensive restaurant in the city and so I had a feeling this would not go well. I walked in, sat down, and waited, as I was not starting the conversation, oh no. My dad looked at Jackson and said, Ugh, did you think you needed a friend as a bodyguard for your feelings? When I told him that Jackson was not a friend, that was my boyfriend. My dad rolled his eyes. 
I asked him what he wanted, and my father said it was time for me to stop pretending to be an artist and come back to the family once and for all. My dad had not followed my career, so he had no idea about how well I was doing clearly. But I asked him just to play his game and said, why now? He had not contacted me since I was 18 years of age. That was when it all came out. My sister Bella had done everything he wanted. She had gone to medical school and she had chosen to go down the career path he wanted her to do. And all in all, she was being the perfect little daughter. However, the pressure seems to have gotten to her and she crashed and burned, dropping out of medical school instantly and having a breakdown. Well, that's what I read between the lines at least. What my dad actually said was he made a mistake thinking a mere girl would be able to carry on the family name and she had failed him and now needed medical help. He said it was time that I came back as he needed me to carry on the family name. And of course, he would pay off my student debt and it was not too late to start medical school. I wish I could say I was shocked about how callous he was about my sister. But I wasn't shocked at all. I tried asking about how she was, but he just waved my question off as if they were not worth his time and effort to answer. I said there's no way in heck. I was coming back and it was so typical of him to assume that I was not successful in my own right. So you know what? I told him in great detail about how well I was doing, that I had a sponsor and that I was selling works from my gallery. It was early days, but it was going swell. This was when I made a mistake. I told him where it was. Even six years on, I can't believe how stupid I was. But at that moment, all I wanted was to rub it into his face that I was doing well in my chosen career path with absolutely no support from him. I told him how disgusted I was about how he was treating my sister. I didn't know at this point that he kicked her out as well and that he needed to take a look at himself as he was an awful human being. Well, after my little rant, we left and I vow never to deal with him again. I've heard all over again and I was so grateful to Jackson and Harley for helping me through the pain it reopened. They both apologized for suggesting I went but I actually felt it was a good thing as I've told my father things I wanted to tell him for years. Man, it felt so good. Three days later, my gallery and the studio where I worked above it burnt to the ground. The first thing I knew about it was a phone call at 4am from my patron who had been contacted by the neighbors around the gallery. I got there just in time to see the ceiling collapse on top of all the work that I've shown in the gallery. I lost everything. I don't remember a lot about that night after I saw that. It's more like snippets of memory that play through my mind. I remember kneeling outside on the road that was soaked with water from the fire hoses. I remember Jackson beside me holding me, telling me it's going to be okay. I remember the smell of paint and lacquer fumes as they burnt and the sound of crackling flames as the work I've put my heart and soul into burnt to ashes. There was nothing anyone could do. Art studios are full of flammable things, and once the fire started, my work was doomed. It was gone. Everything was gone. I remember going back to Harley's and not really hearing what people were saying as I collapsed into the bed and cried myself to sleep. The gallery was insured, but that would not replace my art. Nothing would. Some nights I slept at the studio as I worked into the hours of the night, very early sometimes, and I'm glad I was not there that night. But in my dark eyes, I wish I would have been. I tried to work out how it happened and what I had left there that would have caused this, but nothing came to mind. My patron phoned me the following morning as devastated as I was, as he assumed what a fault in the building electrics have done, not to mention he owned the property. He assured me that although he could not restore my work, obviously, he would provide me with a new gallery and studio and a new modern building with protection to prevent from this ever happening again. After that, I never wanted to paint again, but with the support of my patron Jackson and Harley, I realized that I needed to pull myself together. A few days later, we were told, oh, it was arson. 
There's been no fault in the electrics and I had not left anything on that could have caused it such as a heat gun. Someone had broken the windows and put gasoline-soaked rags into the gallery, causing a massive fire to take hold and once it reached the paintings in the studio, it was over for my work. The police said it looked like a random attack and it was just unfortunate that they would investigate, but I knew deep down, I knew my dad was behind it. But I could never prove it and I still haven't. Well, not officially at least. I felt anger growing inside of me and I was done with living life where being anything but an upper class doctor was seen by my dad as pathetic. He called me after the fire and said he had heard and it was unfortunate that it happened and he would still accept me back now that I had nothing. He said it would be unfortunate if it happened to any new work that I did. That's when I knew that was an idle threat and I knew it was him. So I decided to get my revenge in the only way I knew how. I decided to destroy his reputation through my work. I went to see my partner and explained what I thought had happened and what I wanted to do. So, I contacted my sister and invited her to come and meet me. That was when I found out she was living in a motel, as my dad's thrown her out. I helped arrange somewhere for her to live with a friend of Harley's and... I asked her to help me take out our father's reputation and stamp it all over. She was unsure, but with the support, she realized it would be therapeutic. It was not instant revenge, as I had to get the work together. I was lucky in some ways, as my work had sold well, so I had many pictures out there, and my business partner was a huge collector. My patron was good with his word, and I had a new gallery and studio in a modern building in a better part of town. We used the tragedy of the fire to relaunch when I had some work done, and we brought back paintings that belonged to the other owners, and some I did for friends, and showed them as, quote, examples of my talent. Which, although no, they weren't for sale, they were a showcase of what I've lost. Dang, we played them so badly. That the fire had taken away paintings that would have been classic, and we've dropped hints that we knew who was responsible, and that it was someone trying to ruin my life. It was a huge sob story, and it was funny in some ways. We invited the press for the reopening, and the new paintings were unveiled based around the new theme of the fire. The new gallery raising like a phoenix from the ashes of the old one, and just enough snippets of a bad family relationship with father to make the press become interested in the artist who was treated so badly by his highly respected father. Then my sister and I released our secret weapon. We wrote a book. Illustrated by my work and with the story of the abuse we suffered at the hands of our father, the most prestigious cardiac surgeon in the city, we spared no details. And I finally told the world that I strongly believed my dad had torched my gallery just to try to get me back and take me to the true place and family. I was worried about that part as I had no proof. But it started something we never expected. All I wanted was a bit of a petty revenge on the man who had tried to destroy my life and it caused my sister severe mental health issues, but like a snowball running down a mountain and nothing more than snow, it got larger and more and more people came out and said they've been treated badly by my father and had suffered working under him as well. As you can imagine, the press absolutely loves a scandal, especially one where a rich man gets what they deserve. It was beautiful, and whilst my father was faced with a scandal after scandal, my star continued to rise. My sister Bella turned out to have an eye for art as well, and I employed her as my gallery manager, alongside Jackson. Everyone was keen to see the man who had publicly accused his dad and allowed others to find the courage to speak out. My father, he'll probably recover in time, he always does. But his reputation is forever tainted and the icing on the cake was that when the woman he had affairs with came out to the woodworks and the illegitimate children appeared, maybe those will want to be a doctor. <laughs> but I think they mainly want his money. I'm happy with what happened, and he got a taste of his own darn medicine when he was suddenly having to deal with constant criticism and abuse. 
Oh boy, it was glorious. So, although I don't recommend anything as drastic as what I've been through, I would tell you that no matter what, make sure you live your life as you want to. Follow your dreams. They may not lead you to the life you want, but unless you try, I guess you'll never know. Just know you are not on your own. I will leave this account open, and I'll be here if any of you need someone to listen to. Thank you for your time. Have an amazing day. I've read a lot of stories, and if anyone's reputation needs to be destroyed in all the stories I've read, it's this dad, Nathan. He's an absolute nightmare. I mean, he basically turned against his own daughter just because all the stress that she went through, she couldn't finish the schooling with the pressure that he put on her. So instead of helping her out and saying, hey, sorry I put so much pressure on you, let's try again if you want to, oh no. He goes to his son now and is still trying to force him to go to medical school. And he doesn't even understand how successful his son's made it without his help as an artistic artist. So I want to hear directly from everybody. What would you do if you were in this position and your dad just is relentless and is basically ignoring your sister now? How would you handle the situation? Would you do it the same way OP did and basically tarnish his reputation forever? Drop in the contents down below what you would do. Guys, thank you so much for joining in. My name's Mr. Redito. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button for daily videos, and I hope to see you tomorrow. A peace!